Hello, and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to have you on. During today's webcast, we'll be going over our latest release, 11.2, where we'll have lots of exciting new features. My name is Agnes, and I work on the marketing programs team here at GitLab. I'm joining you from Dubai today. Uh, we'd love to hear where everyone's tuning in from, so if you feel so inclined, please use the chat function to tell us where you are in the world. Also joining us this morning is Dan Gordon from Technical Product Marketing, Lyle Kosloff from Support, and our presenter Cindy Blake from Product Marketing. We're going to give people just a couple more minutes to get logged on. While we're waiting, I'm going to launch a poll you can take part in if you'd like. The graphic on the next slide may be useful as you think through your answer to the first poll question. Great, thanks to everyone who participated in the poll. Before we get started, I'm going to cover a couple of housekeeping items. First, feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. You can use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen for that. We'll have a dedicated time for questions at the end of the presentation and demo, but you can go ahead and send in your questions as you think of them and we'll make sure we get to them at the end. If you're experiencing technical difficulties, you can use the chat function to get in touch with the moderator for help. Now I'm going to turn it over to Cindy to talk about the poll results. Great, thanks Agnes. So it looks like um, most of you are using GitLab for repo and there's a few for CI CD. Um, and then we've got some potential prospects on the phone as well that um, may not be using GitLab at all yet. So I'm excited to be able to share the latest features and enhancements with you and would encourage you to, uh, to get with your sales rep to, for a demo of, of additional capabilities and to learn even more. So, you know, I want to remind you that GitLab is really a critical tool for DevOps enablement across the entire life cycle. Um, it's one application that can help you with, um, you know, accelerating your development and delivery through automation. So think about, um, you know, think about using it from end to end, but I'm excited to share with you several new features in 11.2 that are going to help you get started and iterate faster. Let's see. Trying to move the poll information here. So rapid iteration really is key to success in DevOps. It separates the winners and losers for enterprises that rely on software innovations for competitive advantage. And here at GitLab, we practice what we preach. In addition to monthly major releases, such as this one, we constantly turn out new code to production. In fact, my team recently estimated that we push between 40 and 100 code changes live every day. We use our own product to empower us to move more quickly, our business agility. Each iteration is an opportunity to advance and deliver real advantage to our customers. And if we're off track, we learn about it very quickly before significant investments are made that take us down the wrong path. So let's look at how 11.2 uh, helps GitLab users do the same. So in addition to speed, we practice consistency. This is our 86th consecutive monthly release and we are so proud to be able to launch every single month. Let's look at three release highlights briefly before we move into a demo with Dan. 
All of the release notes can be found under the link here at the bottom. Um, first, let's turn to the second polling question and see uh, how many of you are using GitLab's web IDE. So if you would take a minute and respond to that, I'm just curious about the, uh, the audience. And uh, okay, it's looking pretty evenly. There's a few of you that are not using it, um, several that are. So if you are using it, you're gonna appreciate the newest capabilities in the Web IDE. And if you're not using it, be sure and check it out. Agnes, I think we can go ahead and end that poll. The Web IDE makes it faster and easier to contribute changes to your projects by providing an advanced code editor with commit staging right in your browser. With GitLab 11.2, we've made it even easier to see the effect of your code changes in debug even before you commit. You can now preview your JavaScript web page in the Web IDE, viewing your changes in real time, right next to the code for client-side evaluation. In addition, with 11.2, you can delete and rename files and switch branches without ever leaving the Web IDE. So all these features allow you to see the impact of changes quickly and easily without ever changing context. Let's see, I need to get these polls out of the way. Sorry about that, they're in my way. So, Dan's going to show you more of this in, uh, in the live demo. One, two, five, six, a little bit off here. The, um, the other thing that we want to highlight is custom project templates. In today's fast growing development environment, moving from an idea to setting up a new project from scratch can still be a tedious task. So there's a lot of boilerplate code and some administrative overhead that's gonna prevent your developers from getting started right away. With 11.2, we enable organizations to manage their own project templates. As a GitLab admin, you can now define a group within your installation that serves as a source for custom templates. All direct child projects in this group are available as templates when creating a new project and all relevant repository and database information of a template are copied over to your new project, including the project and wiki repository issues, project configuration, and more. So this is gonna help you get started right away and allow the team to spend more time coding and less time managing the process. The third area here is the ability to import large project structures. So until now, importing complex project structures with multiple substructures was a tedious, time-consuming task. With this release, we introduced support for manifest files for project imports. A manifest XML file contains metadata for groups of repositories, allowing you to import larger project structures with multiple, multiple repositories in one fell swoop. When creating a new project, there is a new option to choose a manifest file as a source for your project import on the project import tab. In addition, you can select from the list of individual projects in a subsequent step if you don't want to import the pro complete project structure. Dan's going to show you more of this in the demo. This is going to allow you to import the, pro the Android OS code from the Android open source project as one exciting use case. And there's many other projects that use manifest files um, that you can import uh, that meet our format requirements. We're excited to also announce that cloud native, um, the GitLab Helm chart is now generally available. This chart features a more cloud native architecture with a container for each component of GitLab and no requirement for shared storage. These changes result in increased resilience, scalability, and performance of GitLab on Kubernetes. A GitLab runner is also deployed, making it easier to get started with GitLab CI CD. The GitLab chart is the best way to deploy GitLab on Kubernetes. So give it a try and let us know what you think. 
Um, in addition, there are several more features aimed at efficiency, teamwork, and collaboration. These are just a few, and um, I would encourage you to check them all out. So enough of the bullets, let's get on with the demo. So I am going to turn this over to Dan for the demo. Thank you, Cindy. Give me just a minute here to get my screen showing. And then we will kick it off. Okay, you should be seeing a window that has GitLab showing. And we are looking at a project called Simple To Do App with View Template. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna hop on over here. And we'll do that. Out of, okay. So, okay. So, what I'd like to start out by showing you is one of the cool new features that we have in the Web IDE uh, that Cindy talked about, and that is the ability to see a live preview of the JavaScript code that you're working on. So, here we have a very simple uh, view app uh, that uh, view.js um, to do application that we got from Code Sandbox. I'll go ahead and pop into the Web IDE. And if you've been using it, this should look familiar, um, but you'll also notice that there's this new uh, button here, live preview. And what this allows us to do is to shuttle our code over to Code Sandbox and pull up the application that we're working on, the client side application, live in our web browser. So we can see here, I've got this simple to-do app and I can add items to it. Um, simply by adding text, such as you need to check out GitLab. I can also delete items from this list by using this uh, X button. But for me, the X button doesn't feel right because I'm not deleting the item. I, I really rather mark it as done so I can feel like I'm getting, you know, I'm getting things done. Um, so I think that button needs a better a better uh, text on it. So we're going to go ahead and make that quick change by opening up the fuzzy file finder. And that information is defined in the to-do list item. So we can type to-do and find here it is right here. We saw that was part of components here. And here's that code or that text. I'm going to go ahead and change that to done. And you can see on the right side right away in real time, it's made that adjustment. So I can see right away when I make changes to my client code, uh, what the impact of those changes are. Um, that's the shortest feedback loop you can ask for. And that's, uh, that's really, really cool. But let's say, okay, done, that's great. It's a big long word, but you know, I, I, I think I'd like to see how that looks with a tick or a check mark um, icon instead. So let's go ahead and do that. First, I'm going to create a new button object. And we'll call that done button.view. And we'll go ahead and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in an SVG uh, graphic from the GitLab icon library. I believe I have queued up here. Then the uh, IDE will help me finish up, finish that off. So there that is, and oops, sorry. Um, and next, I need to add that so that it shows up. I need to add it into uh, uh, the new button component into uh, into my code. So I'm going to import. part of doing all this live, right? And I'll define it as a used component in the system. And 
And then finally, I'm going to tell it to actually use it. Uh, let's see. And something's not working correctly, of course. Demo God's not helping me. Missed a, a slash in done button top view. No. Slash template. Lovely. Um, let's go back and look at and our template, make sure that that is okay. Everything looks good. Module error, ha ha, don't code in front of everybody. <laughs> There's some okay. suggestions. So, so we are seeing that, uh, that I'm getting that error. At going on. Um, I think we'll uh, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, I don't want to sit here and look at this while uh, stare at this forever while you guys are uh, are watching. So um, so we'll move on from that. Um, but uh, what that should do and would do is change the uh, the um, the view uh, of our application uh, and allow us to see uh, the buttons change uh, in front of, in front of your very eyes. Uh, unfortunately, the demo gods are not with us today, so I think we will uh, move on from that. Um, there is a video of this exact demo on the uh, release 11.2 page. I um, suggest you definitely check that page out. Uh, not only a video of what I was attempting to show today uh, working, uh, but also uh, a large number of um, of enhancements in 11.2 that Cindy didn't cover as well because there's so much stuff and we only have a, a short time here. So let's move on. We'll show uh, project templates. Uh, so we are right now in the folder that has been designated on this instance of GitLab to be the project templates folder. Uh, in the project templates folder, I can put my projects and I can set my permissions on those projects. Um, so this was a question that came up earlier um, during uh, during this webinar, uh, which was, can I share uh, my project templates with others? And so, yes, yeah, so the, the access to who can get to these templates is based on the permission models um, that are set on the project itself. But for example, this template I have for my e-commerce Spring app uh, with a minimal pipeline, I can, for example, define the files that I want, including the pipeline definition. Um, we can also do such things as going into the settings and making changes, for example, putting a tag on here for e-commerce, um, uh, setting permission uh, for permissions the way that I would like them to be. Uh, here I just enabled uh, large file support, uh, storage support for Git uh, for anyone using this project. Um, we can also make CI CD changes um, and pipeline changes. So for example, change the timeout, um, make settings on badges and who the members are, integrations, um, repository uh, settings. And all of those will get carried over uh, when this project is used as a template. So how does that look? So how that works is just as, um, as you've always done, if you have, when you're creating a new project, I'm gonna do that here in this particular space, I create a new project, I can do many different ways. I can import one, I can do a, an external repo, and I can create from template as well as a blank one. In the past, we've always had these built-in ones and we can intend to continue adding to those. But now you can set those ones into that special uh, project folder that, or group that I, that I pointed out to you. And that is settable in the instance, what, what is the project group name? Uh, or the group name for the projects. And then those will show up here and I can use those as a template. So for example, the, uh, the Spring app we're just looking at, I can pick where I want it to go. I can set my project name. And then set my uh, 
set my, my level of access uh, that I want it to be, and then let it create. So that'll go and churn away. Um, you may have questions about, okay, what does and doesn't get exported. So that is all identified in the docs. It is based on what we export and import uh, when we're doing that with projects in general. Um, and this will, I imagine, continue to change over time. So things like build traces and artifacts, container registry images, um, the things that you wouldn't think would be repli that you would want to replicate across projects, um, CI variables and encrypted tokens uh, currently do not get pulled over. Um, but everything else you can set, project configurations, webhooks, um, uh, uploads, repository information, wiki, LSF objects, et cetera. And so that's defined here in the docs. And so that'll do its thing for a bit. Um, speaking of projects, just being conscious of the time here, uh, the other piece that uh, that that uh, that Cindy mentioned that is a highlight of this release is uh, the ability to easily import um, complex project structures. So Android is a good example of that. Here I've created a group for Android so I can just keep everything together. I'm basically pulling the manifest from Android code, source code base. So here I'm in the manifest area. Let's go ahead and, for example, get all of the necessary projects that are part of Android 9 release 8. That's our most recent. There is the default.xml manifest file. Can save that out. Now, at this point, we do need to do a little bit of massaging of the data. Um, I'm going to switch over to that for just a second. So you should be seeing um, my, my atom window, and, and I am going to need to change the name of that. So I'll rename it to the, oops, not yet. I'll get rid of my, my test. I'll rename this one to XML. And then we just clean this up a little bit. Here's the manifest file. Uh, the rest of this we uh, we don't want. And so I'll just clean it up a little bit. save it. And so there is a whole bunch of packages defining Android 9.0 R8. So switching back to that browser. Now we are ready to import so we'll go to new project, import project. Now we have this new option called manifest file. I want to put it in my sub project that I, or uh, sorry, my subgroup that I set up. And I'm going to go pick that file that we just cleaned up. And it will quickly parse it and show me all of the projects that are part of that. Now I can say import all repositories, but I don't want to do that right now for this demo. I can select individual ones that I want to have uh, brought in. I think there's there's certainly some UI work that we'll continue to do on this to make this a little more smoother. Um, but um, you can see that I can pretty quickly and easily import uh, the large number of of uh, projects that are part of a very, very large project set. Now, where that will show is in the Android folder or group that I've set up. You can see it's starting to fill in. What did we actually download and get set up? So now we have the full repository, all the whole set of repositories that are Android, including the files, um, the history, of all of that, um, the branches that are part of the uh, part of that, that repository, 
um, and and all of all of the information about about that, so we can build and work with it, and and that was that simple. So it's a great new feature for getting large sets of projects into your system and moving quickly. Um, and that doesn't just have to be Android. Um, the definition of that file is is in the docs. And as long as you adhere to this definition when you're setting it up, you can define your own large sets of projects to, to take in. Then finally, um, we have uh, another piece that is really great if you're doing planning. Uh, this is around the, uh, we can have lots of issues. We have boards and uh, where, you, where you can organize your issues for Kanban or Scrum or however you want to. We also have the ability to set milestones, like sprint milestones, for, as an example, or release milestones, where you can define your issues that are going into each. Now, new with 11.2 is the ability to define boards that are based on the milestones, simply by adding a milestone list. And that allows you to sort and manage the work that you have to do across your milestones. Another addition in 11.2 that really works very well with this is this capability here, where it will tell you how many issues and the weight that you have in this kind of Like for example, this one, first M1 is a little bit high, so I can bounce it up and move that over if it makes sense. So a really cool feature, helping the planning side as well. And with that, I'm gonna cut us back over to, ooh, that didn't work. Okay, well, we're going to switch over to Q&A at this point. So it looks like there's a question that came up that Marketing Ops has. Does the Code Sandbox integration work from CodeSandbox.io website also? Oh, that's uh, from Yashu, actually. Yashu has asked a couple of really good questions, both in the chat and, uh, yeah, and the last one is basically the one that we haven't addressed is on the Q&A that Cindy just mentioned. So maybe Lyle or Cindy or Dan, anybody want to take on that question? Uh, if I understand the question correctly, yeah. So, so the, um, we are using Code, uh, code Sandbox and, uh, and yes, you can, uh, everything that Code Sandbox supports uh, from a language perspective we support in, in our web IDE. And you can actually, there is a button when you're in the web IDE to actually, when it's not having an issue, to, to launch over to Code Sandbox and see your code in, in Code Sandbox's website as well. Awesome. Um, I think there's another um, question that came in through the chat by C. Daniel. Um, can the Large project import also generate a manifest XML based on already imported repos. He said that he had to re import several repos recently where this would have been good to have. I'm sorry, I missed that. Can you, which one are we looking at? Uh, it's on the chat. So, uh, see Daniel asked, can the large project import also generate a manifest XML based on already imported repos? Uh, um, at this point, I don't believe that it can, um, but uh, that's a great feature addition. Um, and if we don't have an issue for that already open, then uh, I encourage you to to add it. Awesome, thanks, Dan. Um, and I think there's another one that came in. Uh, Dennis asked, "Does the live preview cause the code to be made public in Code Sandbox, or can it be used in private projects?" Does the live preview, sorry, a little distracted. Um, sorry, can you ask that again? I'm not seeing the questions in front of me. Uh, uh, it's actually, does the live preview cause the code to be made public on Code Sandbox or can it be used in private projects? Um, To checking it back to you, but I believe that the default behavior is is private. Um, but I would want to confirm that. Um, so if we could um, take that uh, the name down, and we'll get back to you to confirm that. Awesome. 
Awesome. Um, so I think Yashu um, probably wanted to give you some suggestions on how to fix the error. I noticed that. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Everyone can contribute. It's great. Yes, awesome. Thank you, Ashu. Um, yeah, that actually surfaced a new uh, potential requirement in terms of of pairing up developers. Thank you, everyone, for contributing. Indeed. All right. Um, do we have more questions coming up, or um, we're just about out of time? Uh, maybe we should go to the move on to what's oh, coming one next. More, one more question before we uh, move on, I guess. Um, Yashu asked, "Can we add collaborator in the web ID?" Um, not familiar with that. Can we add collaborator in the web ID? Um, I'm not. I'm not too familiar with that myself. But um, again, if it's uh, um, if it's not an issue already, an item that's on our list, then uh, please do feel free to add that. All right. Awesome. And I think that will wrap it up. Uh, I guess Cindy will give us a preview of what's coming up next. Yeah, Dan, if you can go to the next slide, there's a URL on there I'd like to be sure to share. Um, you know, we're really excited that we have continuously provided a launch every 22nd of the month. And so stay tuned for 11.3 that will come out September 22nd. Um, if you want to look at the capabilities that are coming for that launch or for any um, of our product updates, here's the, the URL here. You can take a look at our direction page and uh, see all the details. So thank you all for participating. And Agnes, I think you've got a survey. Yes. So thanks, Cindy. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's webinar. So please fill out our webinar survey, um, which I will drop in the chat right now. Also, we'd like to, uh, Cindy, probably the next slide. Uh, that's Dan. Oh, Dan, sorry. Next slide, please, Dan. All right. So, uh, we'd like you to, we'd like to invite you to sign up for a free trial of GitLab Enterprise Edition. Um, we hope you are excited to see what your team can do with it. I'll chat that link as well. And finally, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach us via our contact page about .gitlab.com slash sales. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us.